The short time of happiness, a song of flowers, is the time of short nights and long days. It evens out the suffering of the long, dark, and cold winters here under the northern sky. In the times of this northern joy, when dawn extends a welcoming arm to dusk, an old man told a story to the kids gathered around him. And I, I will tell you the story. Do you know the light source in the vestibule in the home of the old man of the sky? Right now the light has gone to sleep, but already you can see the rays of it peeking from the east, where it is ready to come out in any minute. Do you know to whom the hands that greet the sun when it comes down from the sky and sends it to sleep belong to? Do you know the hands which wake up the sun and relight it again before it sets up for another trek across the sky? The old man in the sky had two trustworthy slaves who had been gifted with eternal youth. When the sun had finished its very first journey across the sky, the old man said to Dusk, Into your care, my girl, I'll give the setting sun. You have to douse the light every night, so it will not harm anybody on its way to slumber. The next morning, when the sun should have started its next journey across the vast expanse of the blue sky, the old man said to Dawn, Your job, my boy, will be to relight the sun every morning and prepare it to its daily travels. And so it was. Both the immortal souls did they were asked, and the sun was up in the sky every day, not missing any days, even when it barely peeked out across the horizon during the long dark of the winter. On days like these, it finishes its journey sooner and gets enough time to sleep because the morning time comes later on as well. When the spring comes, the sun will wake up nature with its warm rays and realize that from now on till the autumn comes again, it has to work more than it had been used to. And the summer comes, when the sun does not go to sleep at all, and thus gives the sun straight to dawn, who relights its dim glow again. It is the time of summer solstice, when the world is filled with flowers and song, light and joy. It is the time when both slaves of the old man look into each other's deep, dark eyes for the longest of times. As dusk hands over the sun to dawn, their hands touch in soft caress, and their lips meet in the briefest of the kisses. But the old man never sleeps, and he noticed what had happened in the brief glimpse of the night, and he gathered both of them during the next day. He smiled to both of the slaves and said, Dear ones, I am happy with your work, and it is my deepest wishes that you will be happy together. You two should marry, and continue doing your jobs as man and wife. Both of them answered him in unison, Oh, please, old man, do not ruin our joy. Let us be young and in love forever as bride and groom, as our love will stay fresh and young forever. The old man smiled at them again and blessed their decision and agreed to let them continue as they wanted. And ever since then, there is a time in the year, four short weeks, when dawn meets dusk under the dying light of the sky. She sets the dimming sun into the hands of the dawn, and their hands meet with a soft touch, and their lips meet in a sweet kiss. Dusk's cheeks are red, and the sky reflects her joy and excitement to the mortal men by glowing reddish until dawn relights the sun again, and the yellow glow will greet the sky dome again. The old man knows the importance of the meeting, and he fills the world with beautiful flowers and the sweetest of sounds. As dusk rests her head against her lover's chest in a tad too long and brief moments, they are happy to meet, but they have to separate once again, so they can meet again next year. And this was the story of the two eternal lovers, dusk and dawn, who only meet for a short time in summer, only to be parted again.